Any questions about that before we move on? Not expecting any really, just... Okay, uh, next module. So this is the sort of the last of the, uh, the, the content about the fundamental data types in Python. Uh, sets and dictionaries. Sets are something that you probably learned about sometime in grade school for the first time uh, and then probably wouldn't see again unless you took some classes in advanced mathematics as an undergrad. A set is exactly what it sounds like. It is a grouping of values. Uh, unlike a list, the values in a set uh, do not have any order. Even if you put them in in some order, that order has no actual meaning and all of the elements within the set have to be unique. So if you put five into the set twice, you only have one five in the set. You can't, you can't have <coughs> copies. Uh, so set operations, this is actually somewhat unique to Python. Most languages don't have a, a built-in set class, uh, but these are extremely useful in certain contexts, particularly if you're, say, dealing with database operations. So if you have, say, a, a big database and you search the database, for a set of records on one criteria, and you search the database on another criteria, and you get these two big lists of records out, and say you want to find the intersection of those. In other words, all the records that meet both criteria, you can use a set operation to find the intersection between those two sets, and it'll give you the result. So sets are actually extremely useful in a lot of different situations. Uh, sets are very easily defined using curly braces. Uh, so we uh, can define a new set let me, just debating whether I want to, let me just scroll this down. Okay, so we can define a new set by saying A is equal to uh, 1, 3, 6, 8, 9. And again, uh, just, like, uh, just like with lists and tuples, you can put any sort of value in there. You, you can put strings in sets. You can put floating point numbers, whatever you'd like inside a set. You can put a set inside a set if you'd like. Uh, Okay, so we use curly braces and then the, the comma separated uh, sort of list notation and that creates a set like that. Uh, let's make another set which is uh, 3, 6, 8, 12, 15. And then we can say a dot uh, intersection b and we'll find the intersection of the sets or we could say a dot union b and we can find the union of the two sets. Uh, there are all of the standard sort of set operations exist. You can add elements to the set, you can remove elements from the set, uh, you can clear the set. Uh, there are tests you can do to say, is this set a subset of this set? Uh, or is this set a superset of this set? Uh, then union, intersections, and difference. Uh, obviously union and intersection are symmetric operations. If you change the order of operations, uh, it, it'll, it, it's exactly the same. Difference is not. Uh, so if you say A minus B versus B minus A, uh, you'll get different results, right? Because if you have a set, it's saying remove all of the elements from the other set from this set. All right. So that's, that's most of what we're going to cover with sets right now. We may talk about them a little bit later in the class uh, when we get to some specific programming examples where they're useful. Uh, sets are actually sort of a basis for the next concept we're going to talk about, which are dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries are also something that uh, many programming languages do not have built in, and you have to go to a library to get access to them. Uh, in other languages, sometimes these are called maps. Uh, so if you know some C++ programming, for example, uh, uh, you, a map is basically the same thing as a dictionary. Just like the other types we've been talking about, uh, the contents of dictionaries, the values in dictionaries, can be any type of object. It can be a number, a string, uh, uh, a list, anything you like. Uh, however, the keys in the dictionaries are restricted to be immutable types. And this is where that immutable <coughs> tuple kind of can come into play. All right, so I haven't really told you what the dictionaries are yet. Dictionaries allow you to map one type of val one value, one set of values to another set of values. In essence, it's sort of like a simple type of database. Uh, and again, they're defined with curly braces. The reason, th the, the way that they're different is instead of just putting a list of values, you put a list of colon separated pairs. I'll show you what, what that looks like. So let's say uh, 1 to 3 
two, two, five, three, two, seven, four, two, uh, A, B, C. Okay, so now you can see my, my set, uh, it has keys and it has values. Everything before the colon is a key, anything after the colon is a value, right? Uh, what this allows you to do, uh, I guess that this allows you to do lots of interesting sorts of things. This is kind of like a very simple database. In fact, the simplest sort of database when we talk about databases is, is exactly what we have represented here. It allows you to develop these relationships. So in, in a database, in a sense of a database, the, the uh, keys would be the record numbers. And then the values would be the contents of the database for that particular record number. In a sense, this is actually a lot like a list. So if I say A square brackets 1, I can get out the corresponding value. But it allows you to have sparse lists. So that's another use you can make of databases. So if you, want, if you have, if you have you know, a million different possible values, but only 50 of them are defined, if you make a list that has a thousand different nuns in it, and then you only assign the values in those spaces, it's very inefficient. It means that you have to store all of those values. If you had a billion items, it would be extremely inefficient. Uh, if you store it instead in a dictionary, then you can just have it store values for the specific, place, uh, specific values where you have keys. Uh, so if I try to access something that's outside the list of keys that are available, I can, so if I say A of 7, uh, it'll give me an error saying that there's no key corresponding to 7 in the dictionary. Uh, if I say A of 4, I, I, again, I get out A, B, C. Yeah, question? So when you're doing the A of 7, you're not defining that what's in the 7th position. You're saying you're looking for the key. I'm looking for the key 7 and getting the corresponding right. value. Correct. So, I don't, so when, I make the, when I make the dictionary, I don't have to define it as 1 colon whatever. I can even do it like A colon whatever, B colon whatever. That's right. Uh, it's co completely arbitrary. The okay. Like I said, the only restriction is that the keys have to be immutable. Okay, so let's actually do that. Let's, let's add another element to our dictionary. So we've got A, uh, so let's say A of X, Y, Z uh, is equal to Q, R, T. Okay, now if we look at A, you can see we've got a key of X, Y, Z and a key and a value of Q, R, T. So I can say A of X, Y, Z and I can get Q, R, T back, okay? Uh, so you could even use a tuple as a key. So I can say uh, a of 1, 7 is equal to 55, a string, 55. And now you can see that there's that, you know, that, that tuple is a valid key. But I can't use a list as a key. I can only use a tuple as a key because lists are mutable and tuples are immutable. Just like with lists, there's an, uh, the ability to remove elements uh, from a list, although I don't seem to have that on this slide. Del, you think I know this. There we go. Yeah, so you can remove elements from, uh, from dictionaries. This basically the same way you remove them from, uh, from lists. And basically it's removing the, core, the key. Now if you have a, uh, a dictionary and you want to get out all the keys, you can say a, uh, a dot keys. And that'll give you a, a, you can see it's actually giving you a dict keys object, but it acts just like a list, or just like a tuple. Um, so so you, can, uh, you can access all of the elements. Uh, you know, the, uh, the reason it's a dict keys object is because technically, when you get out uh, all of the keys, they don't have any order, of course, uh, that doesn't correspond to any order. So you get them out in arbitrary order. Basically, the, the keys in a dictionary are a set. Okay? That's why you use curly braces to define both of them. So the keys in a dictionary have to be unique. If you try, if you, if, you know, if I went in and I said uh, a of 2 is equal to 7, uh, that is going to replace my earlier definition of what 2 corresponded to. So it's very easy to add new elements to a list. We can use del to remove element, oh, sorry, add new elements to a dictionary. Uh, you can remove elements from a dictionary by key. Uh, you can get a list of all the keys. You can get a list of all the values. Uh, and there's also, you can also get a list of all the items. 
a uh, dot items. Items basically gives you a, a list of tuples, and the tuples are two elements long with the key on the, is the first element and the value on the, is the second element. It basically lets you pull out the entire contents of the dictionary in an iterable way, in a way that you can go through all of the elements. Okay, uh, the last one is in. This isn't a method. This is something that we'll use in, a, in a, the next little section that we're going to go through. Uh, but if you want to see if there's something in a list, if, if a particular key exists in a list, you can say, uh, for example, two in A. Uh, but if I say five in A, it'll be false. That's it for our quick introduction to dictionaries. Dictionaries are probably the most used object in the Python language. They are used all over the place. Uh, so it's good to sort of familiarize yourself with them. There are all sorts of very useful things that you can do with them.